Welcome to the 28storms.com tropical weather update for Sunday, July 24th. Tropical activity is very slow today. The main emphasis continues to be on Invest 90L, the tropical wave currently located over Hispaniola. The National Hurricane Center is giving this about a 10% chance of forming into a tropical cyclone within the next 48 hours. And things really aren't any different in the eastern Pacific. It's very quiet out there. We just have the remnants of Dora. It's still a tropical storm, but it's barely clinging to life, and it will be downgraded within the next 6 to 12 hours. On the service chart, you can see both Dora and Invest 90L, the associated tropical wave over Hispaniola. And that's about it for much of the tropics. There's also a tropical wave near 40 degrees west, but it doesn't look very good on satellite imagery. And the same can also be said for Invest 90L. As we can see, the convection is still elongated from west to east across much of eastern Cuba, even Jamaica, and much of Hispaniola, including Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Areas around here can expect continued thunderstorm activity over the next 24 hours, but ever so gradually this tropical wave will continue to spread westward, and within the next two days it's going to be along the Cuban coast here. The northern extent of the tropical wave could enhance the shower activity along the Florida Peninsula a little bit, but the overall track is going to be into the central and eventually the western Gulf of Mexico. But right now it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing much in the way of tropical development. We still have a persistent upper level trough located over the Bahamas and that's still causing 20 to 30 knots of vertical wind shear. And also the land interaction with Hispaniola and Cuba is really not helping the chances of tropical development. You'll notice on the Sims wind shear analysis that the tropical wave really can't get away from this upper level trough. We still have 20 to 30 knots of shear across much of this region and here's just a different look at it. You can really make out the upper level low quite well here. It's just to the north of the Bahamas, but the associated upper level trough is dangling off toward the south and west. The low level steering flow is expected to remain status quo. If we look off toward the mid-latitudes, we don't really see any diving areas of troughiness, so this persistent low to mid-level ridge over much of the western Atlantic and the U.S. Gulf Coast should remain in place for the next short to medium range, and that's going to push this tropical wave westward eventually into Texas. And that's really all the tropics have to show for today. If we look into the central and eastern Atlantic, we do see some tropical waves and disturbances out there along the inner tropical convergence zone, but none of them are showing any signs of development. The same can be said out here in the eastern Pacific. There's tropical storm Dora, but it's moving into cooler sea surface temperatures, and it's moving away from the Baja Peninsula, and the rest of the eastern Pacific are looking very clear today. Looking ahead with the 12Z Canadian CMC, we don't really see much that sands out. It doesn't do anything with Invest 90L. In fact, it loses the tropical wave altogether. Toward the end of the period, we do begin to see an increase in low pressure along the Central American coastline here, but most of it is concentrated inland. And we do have an increase in tropical wave activity near the Cape Verde Islands, but nothing showing signs of organization. The 12Z GFS is also fairly pessimistic in terms of developing anything over the next week. Once again, nothing really stands out, except toward the end of the frame, we do see an increase in activity along the eastern Pacific side of Central America. Here we go again. And there's also a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa, but again, nothing imminent in the short term or even medium range. If we look at the latest 12Z no gaps, it is developing somewhat of a tropical disturbance, possibly even a tropical depression or a tropical storm here in the Central Atlantic within the next five to seven days. But the no-gas model doesn't have a good track record, especially out here in the deep tropical Atlantic. And as of right now, it's the only model showing anything like this. So I'm going to discount this solution for right now. If we look at the 12Z ECMWF 850 millibar vorticity forecast, we can still make out the evolution of Invest 90L. We can see that there is still a vorticity max over Hispaniola at the current time. But as I advance this, you'll see that the tropical wave continues to gradually move off toward the west-northwest. By 72 hours, it's located along the northern half of the Yucatan coastline into the central Gulf of Mexico. And by 96 and 120 hours, we still see a faint sign of that tropical wave beginning to move into the upper Texas and Louisiana coastline, but not showing any signs of development whatsoever. In the meantime, much of the remainder of the Atlantic Basin and even the eastern Pacific are quiet, although toward day 6 here and day 7, we begin to see some tropical activity to the south of the Gulf of Tuanapec. So if anything, we do have somewhat of a consensus between the CMC and ECMWF that we may have to look for Eastern Pacific development in the five to seven day forecast range. So that sums up your tropical weather update for this Sunday. Please stay tuned to 28storms.com. 
I can guarantee you it's not going to stay quiet for long, so please enjoy the break while you still can. I'm very confident that August and September will be very explosive months in terms of Atlantic tropical cyclone activity. In fact, we may also produce a video within the next week, or at least a discussion, as we have more ideas as to how this August and September period is going to play out, at least in terms of total numbers. And also, we still have the threat of possibly some Eastern Pacific development in the five to seven day range. So keep it tuned here to 28storms.com. We'll keep you informed throughout the hurricane season.